We have so much to be thankful for. We have a 15-month-old grandson. That's good. Oh, <laughs> and grandparenting is not overrated. <laughs> We've had them all weekend. And I want to tell you about how many of y'all are grandparents? And great-grandparents. And great-grandparents. Yeah. Okay. This morning, in the kitchen of the staff room, someone had laid out some cookies. And I said, well, that looks pretty good. I think I'll try it with my coffee. And I had a memory of my grandmother as I bit that peanut butter cookie. You know how uh, sometimes when you make cookies, you take a fork and you make the imprint yes. on the fork? Yes. Y'all yeah. know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, I could, just, I could just see my grandmother standing. And it's, it's like she was present with me. And how many of you can remember your stories of your grandmother, your grandpa? Oh, yeah. They're treasures, aren't they? Yeah. We sing the hymn, Abide With Me. And in the kitchen this morning, I felt the abiding presence of my grandmother. <laughs> Friends, you can't make that stuff up, can you? And you know, I, as a, a counselor and a therapist, I talk to many people throughout the week and throughout the month. And sometimes people grow up with difficult childhood. <laughs> But seldom do I find a person that can't say something loving and caring about a grandmother or a grandfather that had a significant part of their life. Thanks be to God. Amen? Amen. Y'all got me preaching this morning. <laughs> so, pray for the church. I, I appreciate what Al said, that we all... Uh, Y'all know this better than anybody because y'all have experiences. Only God can heal our land. That's right. Mm -hmm. Only God. And there's some big problems out there. But I'm confident and I'm grateful that God is sufficient. I'm thankful today for the fact that many churches are having to cut back some have sold their property. I have friends that have lost their, their ministers and they've lost their jobs. But, but friends, that, that had, we've got our problems here, but that hadn't been one of our problems. So we continue to do what we feel called to do. Uh, the Presbyterians are having challenges. The Methodists are having challenges. And we have our own challenges here, but uh, I'm, glad, I'm grateful that we have the challenges that we have and not others. Are we doing okay, Nancy? Well, we're trying to cut your head off just a little bit. Oh, so oh, I just realized, I well, we so couldn't much. find it that tall enough. We just, there we go. What do you think? We got yeah, it. Yeah, that's good. We just, could it slip down? Well, I don't, I don't know, know how many people visit with us online. Do we have any way of knowing, Nancy, how many people join us? Yeah, we do. Um, mm -hmm. It varies. Logan, it's so funny. He said that usually uh, most of our teachers will have, say, 15 or so, but Wallace will have maybe 30. Oh and, my goodness. and so Logan says, I think, um, I think Wallace is looking at his own just to get <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's good. Well, I want to say to those of you who are joining us virtually that you are here with us even though you aren't physically here with us and we pray for you and we're grateful for you so our scripture today in this three-part series is about cheerful giving so two weeks ago we talked about the Israelites last week Nancy taught us about the widow and today we're going to talk about the church so some of y'all know that 
uh, for several years, I worked at Peachtree Presbyterian Church. I, was, I actually was at George Baptist Hospital uh, for about four days, and then one day a week I was at Peachtree Presbyterian. And those of you who've been in Atlanta a long time will remember the name Frank Harrington. Mm -hmm. And Frank taught me something about stewardship. And what he taught me was that Frank was a pastor who did not mind asking individuals to step up their giving. He would, he would actually go to people and say, look, this is what we need, and I need you to help me do this. And here's his way that he thought about it. He said that giving is a part of stewardship. And when he was asking the person to participate, he was actually doing the individual a favor. So it's a different way to think about stewardship, gratitude. You know, the scripture says, unto whomsoever much is given, much is required. And it's out of our gratitude that, that we are able to give. So the early church is what we're going to focus on this morning from Acts chapter 4. And we're going to read uh, verses 32 through 37. So, the, the historical context of our passage is not that far after the life and death of Christ here in Acts chapter 4. So we're talking about the early believers in the early church, the beginnings of our history and tradition. So here's what we read from Acts chapter 4. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And much grace was with them all. There was no needy persons among them, That's quite a statement, isn't it? There were no needy persons among them. From time to time, those who owned lands or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone as he had need. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. So the text of our concentration today is on the believers and how they shared what they had. Last Sunday we sang a song about the threefold truth and the scripture talks about two of those threefold truths when the scripture says the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and much grace was with them all The good news, as I understand it today, is that because of the resurrection, because of what God did through Christ, we have hope. And you know, the scripture says that we do grieve, yet we don't grieve as those without hope. Now, this next Sunday, we're going to light candles on All Saints Day. You know, Halloween really began as a religious holiday, and then it got off track, <laughs> right? And I'm going to test y'all's history knowledge. What happened on 
October 31st with Martin Luther. It was on Halloween, October 31st, that he nailed the theses to the door and thus began the Reformation of the church. So next Sunday is All Saints Day and it's also Reformation Sunday. And we're going to have a recognition, and, you, and Al mentioned these earlier, this earlier, uh, to honor and give thanks to God for the people who have died. And this very day, as we speak, they have no pain and no sorrow. Can you imagine? Your loved ones have no pain and no sorrow? <laughs> it's beyond my comprehension. Now, in Hope for Grieving Children, sometimes the children will say, well, does Daddy know what I'm doing, or does Mama know what's going on? And I, I usually say, well, I have no idea. But I tend to think that what they are about is so beyond what we are about that it's not on the back side of their mind. Because if they did know, think about your loved ones, your grandparents, your parents. If they did know what was going on, I think there would be some pain and sorrow. So I don't know. We'll find out. But I tend to think that to be in the presence of God, to be in your eternal home, is beyond comprehension. We, it's hard to comprehend all of that. So the hope that we have, as I understand it, is that we have, we have two sources of hope. And I'm going to preach about one of them in a couple of weeks. I'm going to talk about, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to preach on the thorn in the flesh. And pray for me as I study and prepare for that sermon. I, I don't preach that often, but I thank God every time I preach for Dr. Head. <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I tell him that. I said, look, I can, I can do this once every six months or twi once a year, twice a year, but to have to preach every Sunday and have to say something of substance and relevance, it's not an easy task, friends. So we're going to talk in a couple of weeks about the thorn in the flesh. And you can be thinking about that in terms of what is your thorn. Because what we're going to talk about is how Paul says in the scripture that it doesn't matter what your circumstances are, that the grace of God is all we need. And how Paul repeatedly prayed that whatever was irritating him or annoying him or bothering him, he prayed that it would be taken away and the prayer was not answered in the way that he thought it would be answered. But the grace of God was sufficient. So the one prong of hope is for those of us here on this earth that we have God's sufficient grace. The hope for those who have gone before us is that there is no pain and no sorrow and they are in their eternal home, resting at peace with God. And so, so it's because of the resurrection of God through Christ that we have the hope that we have. Now, I, I, I'm often reminded of the, the mystery of God and how if we do believe in the omniscience of God, which I do, which means that God knows everything, the truth of the matter is that God knew ahead of time of the mess of our world, the mess, I'm telling y'all, 
It, it's crazy out there. And what, what people, what families are dealing with, the stress, the confusion, and God, if we do believe in the omniscience of God, God knew ahead of time what he was planning to do to come and live among us and live in the mess that we live in. Think about that, that God knew ahead of time, and yet he still chose to come, and as the scripture says, he pitched his tent among us. He tabernacled among us so that we could know God. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? That's pretty amazing. So we have a lot to be thankful for. So All Saints Sunday is uh, October 31st, but then I want to also remind you that on December 1st, we're going to have a worship service in the chapel on a Wednesday night, and this is what I'm really excited about. We are going to light candles in memory of the people that you see listed in the order of worship. We're going to light candles for those as well as others. And we are privileged to have a harpist come and be a part of our worship service. So last couple of years, I had Stephanie and Caroline accompanying us. You were part of that, weren't you? Yeah. And they did a wonderful job, but we have a professional harpist that, and let me tell you how, how that happened, because it's, it's a wonderful story. Uh, Logan said casually that he had some budget money that he had to spend. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, what do you think about having a harpist? And so we got Jane on it, and there's a young lady who's new to Atlanta, and Wednesdays are not that big of a draw for musicians, and she signed a contract to have this harpist come. So on Wednesday night, the service will begin at 6.30, but the harpist will begin at 6. So I invite you to be a part of that worship service on December 1st, Wednesday night, December We call it Holiday Hope. And families are able to publicly share with the body of Christ their experience. And what we know from the grief literature is that grief is both an internal process and a corporate experience. So the internal process is what we talk about, about the grief work. But what we know is that effective grief work is done within a community. So it could be within a family or within a church or within an organization. So we are a part of that as the body of Christ. So I'm looking forward to that service on December 1st. And uh, if you get a chance, thank Logan for his extra money. I'd already spent all my budget money. (laughs) But he had some left over. Well, we got a few more minutes. Um, anybody have words of wisdom that you want to share for the good of the cause? You got a thought, Marty? Uh, nothing really that, that profound, but I would say it is a wonderful joy and hope when we can hear you teach and yeah. preach. Yeah. It is a gift from God, and I praise Him for that. <laughs> it's a joy. And I, I think y'all know this, but when I when I stand in the pulpit, by the way, the most rewarding, I told Dr. Head this, the most rewarding times of my ministry have been the last five years as I lead in corporate worship. Mm-hmm. And when I get up in the pulpit, I am overwhelmed with the fact that God knows every one of you I know most of the sheep, (laughs) but God remembers every one of your names, even when I can't remember your name. And and, and, one thought: when Barbara and I were in Meridian, Mississippi, and came over there (laughs) to see you you, at the time of 
my mother, your my, at my dad. mother's uh, service. Yeah, and no, you are very special. In well, I life. appreciate that. That meant, a, that meant the world to me. I still have a picture that we, that someone took of the three of us. Yeah. Thank you. Nancy? You know, you were saying what is really true, the world is in a mess, but at that moment I thought, geez, we, we did not put up there on the prayer list those missionaries for being held oh, hostage. Oh, oh, right. Oh. And uh, I, I think we all need to remember that situation. Yeah. Right. What a, what a, yeah. a mess, as you say. Well, it is. Yeah. Some of y'all know Elizabeth, our intern. Yeah. And you know, I'm so thankful that we as a church have interns. I, for me personally, I was a part of, I think, four internships in my educational process. It's invaluable. And it's invaluable not only for the student, but also for the church. So we meet on a regular basis. Last semester, Elizabeth met with Logan. This semester, she's meeting with me. And she asked me a few weeks ago, Doyle, do you know anything about refugees? I said, well, Elizabeth, I must confess I do not. And she said, she's a student at McAfee, she said, would you be willing to help me lead a group to the refugees in Clarkston, Georgia? And I said, I'd, I'd be privileged to do that. I'd be honored to do that. So last Wednesday night, we had Pastor Jean Marie. If y'all were here, you saw Pastor Jean Marie. He brought his wife mm -hmm. and two of his boys. And so in January, Elizabeth and I are going to be doing a group support, educational and support to the families who have been traumatized by their experience. They're in, their, they're in a foreign land. And we are home to them. And, and most of those families, to your point, Nancy, have been traumatized as they've been uprooted from all that they've known. So pray for Pastor Jean Marie and Elizabeth as she continues her theological education. Y'all might not know this, but Elizabeth already has her master's degree in social work from Baylor University. So she came, and so she came to McAfee to get her theological education. So she has her edu her social work education, and she has come uh, to get the theological education. So I'm so glad that our church believes in internships and the way that we can teach students uh, like those those that we've had in the past. So I'm grateful for that. Pray for Dr. Head, please, and. You know, I told him the other day, I said, you know, you handle stress so well. He said, well, I might, we were talking about, you know, the duck on the water and how the duck is paddling and no one sees, <laughs> sees what's underneath the water. <laughs> but he has, has done a good job of leading us. And one of the things that, and pray for the search committee because we're getting closer to the end of the selection process. And I'm, I'm thankful for that. And we, we told the, we had an interview with, with one of the candidates that will likely be the candidate. And one of the things that I said to the, the person that we interviewed, I said, look, we enjoy working with each other and we don't want you to mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> so we're looking forward to that. This so I'm, I'm grateful. Music. Pardon? Yeah, you said search committee, you didn't say for whom. It's music. That's what I thought. Yeah, it's music. Just to clear anybody's yeah, mind. <laughs> and you know, here, no, here, I was thinking I missed a few weeks. You know, yeah. oh, don't tell me. It's, 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 it's music. Oh, okay. And here's the challenge of, of that job is that no job besides the pastor has more visibility and more involvement in the life of the church than that position. Mm -hmm. So, Nancy? Well, I was going to say some of us were really privileged to get to go and speak with that and, oh, good. And um, are, are very, very encouraged and very, we're very impressed and hope, hope that's what comes to pass. Now, Nancy, who did you represent? The choir. Oh, good. Okay. There was choir, there was orchestra, there were bells, there were just other people. It, it was a, a pretty inclusive musical yeah. group. Yeah, good, good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, let's pray.
pray together. Our Father, we're grateful to you this morning for your blessings. And we say collectively as the body of Christ today, praise God from whom all blessings flow. So we're grateful, Lord. And as we think about those who have gone before us, I'm reminded today, O oh Lord, that we are all dust. Every one of us, we are all dust, and to dust we shall return. But thanks be to God. Thank you, Lord. The love of God, the grace of God through Christ, the sufficient grace of God through Christ, gives us strength to continue to live our lives by faith. So we give you thanks for that. We pray for families today, O oh Lord. We pray for families that are grieving and are walking with grief. We pray for memories of grandparents, grandmothers, and grandfathers who nurtured us and cared for us and encouraged us and challenged us and loved for us in a way that we were able to see the face of God. And for that, we give you thanks, O Lord. The mystery of who you are, much of which we can see as we look around the world and much that we cannot even see and can't even understand, but yet we give you thanks. Dismiss us today with the reminder of the hope that we have in Christ, in Christ alone. And thank you, O oh Lord, for the reminder today that only you, only you can heal our land. And I pray that no one, no one would miss out on your grace. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us better than we can speak, better than we can verbalize, that you know the spoken as well as the unspoken, the public as well as the private. And we give you thanks for that. We love you, Lord. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.